Hello, and welcome to Bible Buddy. Today we'll be reading from Leviticus 27 and also Psalm 31 and 32. And let's pray before we start reading. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come to you in and through the blood of the Lamb and humbly ask that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide and direct us in reading of your word. We pray now, Father, that you increase our faith as we learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's turn to Leviticus number 27. The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the Israelites. If you make a special vow to dedicate someone to the Lord by paying the value of the person, here is the scale of values to be used. A man between the ages of 20 and 60 is valued at 50 pieces of silver. A woman of that age is valued at 30 pieces of silver. A boy between 5 and 20 is valued at 20 pieces of silver. A girl of that age is valued at 10 pieces of silver. A boy between the ages of 1 month and 5 years is valued at 5 pieces of silver. A girl that is age is valued at 3 of that age is valued at 3 pieces of silver. A man older than 60 is valued at 15 pieces of silver. A woman older than 60 is valued at 10 pieces of silver. If you desire to make such a vow but cannot afford to pay the prescribed amount, go to the priest and then evaluate your ability to pray. You will then pay the amount decided by the priest. If your vow involves giving a clean animal, one that is acceptable as an offering to the Lord, then your gift to the Lord will be considered holy. The animal should never be exchanged or substituted for another. Neither a good animal or a bad one nor a bad animal for a good one. But if such an exchange is in fact made, then both the original animal and the substitute will be considered holy. But if your vow involves unclean animal, one that is not acceptable as an offering to the Lord, then you must bring the animal to the priest. He will access his assess its value and his assessment will be final if you want to redeem the animal you must pay the value set by the priest plus 20 percent if you dedicate to a house to the lord the priest must come to assess its value the priest assessment assessment will be final if you wish to redeem the house you must pay the value set by the priest plus 20 percent then the house will again belong to you if you dedicate to the Lord a piece of your ancestral property, its value will be accessed by the amount of seed required to plant it. Fifty pieces of silver for an area that produces five bushels of barley seed. If the field is dedicated to the Lord in the year of Jubilee, then the entire assessment will apply. But if the field is dedicated after the year of Jubilee, the priest must assess the land's value in proportion to the years left until the year of Jubilee. If you decide to redeem the dedicated field, you must pay the land's value and assess it and is assessed by the priest plus 20%. <coughs> then the field will again belong to you. But if you decide not to redeem the field or if the field is sold to someone else by the priest, it can never be redeemed. When the field is released by the year of Jubilee, it will be holy, a field specially set apart for the Lord. It will become the property of the priest. If you dedicate to the Lord a field that you have purchased, but it is not a part of your ancestral property, the priest must assess its value based on the years until the next year of Jubilee. You must then give the assessed value of the land as a sacred donation to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, the field will be released to the original owner from whom you purchased it. All the value assessments must be measured in terms of the standard sanctuary sheeple. You may not dedicate to the Lord the firstborn of your cattle or sheep because the firstborn of these animals are already belonging to him. However, if it is the firstborn of the ceremonially unclean animal, you may redeem it by paying the priest's assessment of its worth, plus 20%. If you do not redeem it, the priest will sell it to someone else for its assessed value. However, anything specially set apart by the Lord, whether a person, an animal, or an inherited field, must never be sold for redeemed. Anything devoted in this way has been set apart for the Lord as holy. A person specially set apart by the Lord for destruction cannot be redeemed. Such a 
such a person must be put to death. A tent that produces the land, whether grain or, or fruit, belongs to the Lord, must be set apart to Him as holy. If you want to redeem the Lord's tent of the fruit or grain, you must pay its value, plus twenty percent. The Lord also owns every tenth animal counted off from your herds and flocks. They are set apart to Him as holy. The tenth animal must not be selected on the basis of whether it is good or bad, and no substitutions will be allowed. If any exchange is in fact made, then both the animal, then both the original animal, and the substituted one will be considered holy and cannot be redeemed. These are the commandments that the Lord gave to the Israelites through Moses on Mount Sinai. Okay, let's go to the Psalms. We're reading Psalm thirty-one and thirty-two. O、oh、Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be put to shame. Rescue me, for you always do what is right. Bend down and listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be for me a great rock of safety, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this peril. Pull me from the trap my enemies set for me. For I find protection in you alone. I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. I hate those who worship worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. I am overcome with joy because of your unfailing love. For you have seen my troubles, and you care about my the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to my enemy, but have set me in a safe place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. My sight is blurred because of my tears. My body and my soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Misery has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all my enemies. I am despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they turn the other way. I have been ignored, as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard many rumors about me, and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying you are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant, in your unfailing love save me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to your help. Let the wicked and be disgraced, and let them lie silent in the grave. May their lying lips be silenced, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. Your goodness is so great; you have stored up great blessings for those who honor you, who have done so much for those who come to you for protection. Blessing them before the watching world, you hide them from the shelter of your presence. Save them from save those from who conspire against them. You shelter them in your presence, far from accusing tongues. Praise the Lord, for He has shown His unfailing love. He kept me safe when my city was under attack. In sudden fear, I had cried out. I have been cut off from the Lord, but you heard my cry for mercy and answered my call for help. Love the Lord, all you faithful ones, for the Lord protects those who are loyal to Him. But He harshly punishes all who are arrogant. So be strong and take courage, all you who put your hope in the Lord. And also, we're reading Psalm number thirty-two. Oh, what joy for those whose rebellion is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight! Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, I was weak and miserable, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated, evaporated like water in summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. 
I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me, as my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly confess their rebellion to you while there is time, that they may not drown in the flood waters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, "I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like the senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. My sorrows come to the wicked, and unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, and you." Who obey him, shout for joy. All you whose heart are pure. That concludes our reading for day number fifty-three, and thank you for reading along, and I'll see you tomorrow.